Ultra Classic Cars, and on this week's episode, sponsored by Mauser Electronics and Molex, I'm dressed differently because we're here at Alton Park to see if the 1,000 horsepower four-wheel drive bug zapper can go round corners and stop on the track. Let's get into it. <sighs> right, the nerves are setting in now. I can finally take this thing out on the track. So time to put the lid on and see what it can do. But I'm just going to caveat that with it's going to be slowly, slowly catchy monkey today. I'm just going to go out, do a lap, change some in, go out again, etc. So, go. You know, no racing today. Remember, no racing today. Right, we'll see you on track. my first run out in four-wheel drive mode on a track and uh, yeah the adrenaline certainly was flowing then but I've come back in straight away because there is a setting I need to change because it's the first time I run it in four-wheel drive properly in anger I noticed that the uh, wheel speed sensor front to rear comparison is way out so I need to just adjust that because we want the computer if you like to to think that both wheels are uh, rotating at the same speed so I'm just going to make an adjustment and go out again and that's essentially what today's all about do a couple of laps back in tweak a couple of more laps tweak again so yeah first setting change of the day is a front to rear bias setting on the uh, wheel speed so one of the main things we're checking today is the suspension and seeing how it uh, goes around corners and that's why Ben is here from Race Shocks because they supplied the suspension system and it's not as simple as you might think because we've changed the weight distribution of this car compared to what it used to be um, we've had to get complete new suspension haven't we not just springs and dampers but the struts and everything so you've had a little bit of a challenge to do this for us haven't you just a little bit of yes so, so what, uh, what have we got on here uh, take the, take us through it so you have a three-way adjustable damper here yeah um, what's, what's three what does three-way mean because people might not know so originally you had a non-adjustable damper yeah um, now you have a three-way damper so that's adjustable in low speed compression, yep. high speed compression, and then rebound through the top here. Right, gotcha. In essence, the high speed is, is a fast wheel movement. Yep. So if you hit a pothole, it's a, it's a high speed hit. Okay. Um, low speed is your weight transfer, roll and pitch sort of stuff. Gotcha. And rebound is how, how fast the wheel can rebound into the ground, essentially. So if it is a hollow, it, it, it's how fast it can track the ground. Perfect, um, nice. But it's so also height adjustable as well. Height adjustable it? here. Um, so we, we took, as you said, the balance of the car has changed dramatically from its Fun Cup days. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we've taken the weight of the car into consideration, the damper angle, um, and calculated what spring you require for the vehicle. Perfect. Um, so we do that in a split then on a frequency basis, front to rear. Okay. And but just to be clear, you've also had to make the strut itself, haven't you? Yes, yes, so it's it's a complete unit. So this is a, you know, it has an internal piston here um, and then a remote reservoir, reservoir there. Um, but yeah, we made the whole unit, basically. So, so lots of testing today. We're not trying to set any <laughs> records. Just got to get that in my race car, well, my race driver head. So there's no records to be set today. It's all about setup. So that's why Ben's going to be helping us today. We're going to be doing a couple of laps coming in, tweaking, yeah. there's going to be a lot of faffing around today, so <laughs> it's about time we started on track I think. Now as luck would have it, look what's next door, it's an actual fun cup next door, but uh, it's lunchtime and we've learnt so much this morning, done a load of tweaks, uh, so while we're having lunch, back to the lab to tell you all about one of our most important suppliers, Molex. Now, one of the most common low voltage connectors we use here in the workshop in electric classic cars is Molex. And I kind of put them into three families, if you like. There's the females, the males, 
and also bulkhead connectors. So they, they're available in all sorts of different um, number of pins, if you like. There's a two pin there, four pin there, six up to, I don't know what uh, that one is there, but if I show you how they work, so that's your male connector there, or oh, sorry, that's the female connector. There's your male, and obviously you've, you put your wires and your crimps in there, but also on the male connectors here, there's a little, you know, uh, mount, if you like, here, and that helps us mount it in the car somewhere like that, so that then when we've got whatever connection we need over here, we just essentially put it in there and you're done. So these are the most common connectors we use. We use a lot of these on battery boxes as well. And if you notice on these two here, they're very similar, but they've got a keyway on as well. So if you've got two connectors close to each other and you don't want to accidentally put the wrong, which one's that going to be? The wrong one onto there. This won't go onto there because there's a keyway on it, but it will go onto there, which probably means that one's going to go onto there like that, for instance. So really good connectors. Um, we use a lot of these as we say, but whenever you use connectors like this, don't forget the most important thing is to use the right tools for crimping. If you don't use the right tools for the crimping, then the crimps that you use are going to be useless because you're not getting a good connection. It might work for a little bit if you're doing, some, uh, doing it with pliers, but believe me, that will fail at some point. So it's really important you use the right crimpers from Molex as well. And all of these products here, not just the um, uh, the connectors, but the crimps, and also the tools. All of this is available from Mauser Electronics, and we'll put a link in the description for you. Whenever you go playing, it's always best to bring friends, and that's what's happened today. I've got my mate Tice here. He's brought his awesome 240Z today. I've brought some noisy friends, basically. Yeah, so Tyson here with the 240Z. This thing is a beast. Uh, what's, what motor's in the back, Tice? Straight, straight six, what is it? Yeah. Single overhead cam, straight six, L series. L series. L series, straight six. It's a beast. Right, first proper setup change today. So I've got that traction uh, between the front and rear sorted. And now we're going to adjust the suspension on the rear. So to do that, Johnny's just dropping off the diffuser off. We'll open up the clamshell, go we'll do a little bit of tweaking, or, or Ben has over there from Race Shocks, just to uh, harden up the rear. It's a little bit too soft on the rear at the moment. So, uh, first problem I found, it's a, a problem that we had way back when we first got this running. Power steering, it works great and then all of a sudden it's just gone, it stops. I don't know why, I put a bigger motor on, but that's not even warm, so that's cold. So it tells me that that's not really doing any work. Uh, fuses look good, so currently I'm at a loss as to why there's no power steering. So I was really having to saw on the uh, steer. I tried it for a few laps without, but uh, not that strong. Okay, so I'm just about to go out again now when I noticed a slight imbalance, slight, I mean lot, uh, between the temperature of the rear motor and the front motor. Now, the rear motor should be doing all the heavy lifting, if you like, and the front motor is a helper motor, which means that the rear motor should be the hottest. However, this, when we came back from lunch, was at 30 degrees, and bear in mind we left the cooling running all at, uh, through lunch. This is at 30 degrees, the front one was at 82 degrees. So I think that might be related, hopefully, to why the steering is getting stiffer and stiffer as we're going along. So what we've done, if Tim comes back over here, just for the last few minutes, uh, about 10 minutes now, we put a uh, clamp on the pipe that goes to the rear motor, so we're forcing on this Y piece here from the pump, all the coolant to go through the front motor and we've noticed now it's very quickly come down to 65 so it's definitely not getting the coolant going through the front motor as much as it needs to so when we get back to the workshop we're probably going to put a helper pump on that front motor
we've got to go away and work on now is that power steering issue where it's getting tighter and tighter as the laps go on so something not quite right there and the other thing is we've got to put that helper pump in as well to get that motor at the front as cool as the rear one so here we go a bit of work for us to do but on that note it's i think it's just time to thank our sponsors for this episode mauser electronics go to mauser.com for all your electronics needs and molex who've specifically sponsored this episode and on that note hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one